Hey everyone, I'm Nick Raboy from MongoDB. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to create documents within a MongoDB cluster using the Go programming language. There are a few requirements that must be met prior to watching this particular video and tutorial series. For example, you will need to be registered with MongoDB Atlas and you will need the Go programming language installed and configured. As you can see, I already do have a cluster available within MongoDB Atlas. It's already been whitelisted and is ready to go when it comes to my local development. You will need to handle all of the configuration yourself prior to watching this particular video. Within my collections for this particular cluster, I have a few databases, none of which are going to be used in this particular tutorial. We're going to be creating our own database and our own collections and our fresh data set. Let's go ahead and go into Visual Studio Code. This is the editor I'm going to be using for this particular tutorial. Use whatever editor you feel the most comfortable with. I'm using code from a previous tutorial in the series. So as you can see, I'm already establishing a connection to my MongoDB Atlas cluster. Let's go ahead and validate what version of Go we're using. So we're saying Go version, and I'm using Go version 1.13.4. In terms of the MongoDB Go driver, I'm using version 1.1. Point three. Now, if you're using a different version, it may still work, but if you want to match exactly what I'm doing to this tutorial, at least now you have the version information. Now, when it comes to creating documents within MongoDB, MongoDB stores them as BSON, so binary JSON, even though it looks kind of like JSON up front to us. These are examples of the documents that we're going to be inserting in our MongoDB cluster. So for example, they're going to have an ID, which is an object ID, and then they're going to have other fields that represent our particular document in the collection. Let's go ahead and look at our main.go code. This is where we're going to add all of our code when it comes to creating our documents. Now there's multiple ways to create documents within MongoDB. We're going to be exploring the insert one, as well as the insert many functions when it comes to Go. But before we do that, let's get a handle to a database in our cluster, as well as a handle to some collections in our database. Let's go ahead and say quick start database equals client dot database. And let's go ahead and call this database quick start. It doesn't currently exist in my cluster, but it will when we start using it. And just to confirm, client is our actual client connection to our cluster that we have established on line 18. Now that we have our database, let's go ahead and get a handle to a collection. So let's go ahead and say podcast collection equals quick start database dot collection. And we're going to say this is going to be called podcasts. We're also going to create a collection called episodes. So we're going to say episodes collection equals quick start database dot collection episodes. So in my fictional story, we're going to be creating two collections, one for holding podcasts and one for holding episodes for any one of those podcasts. So generally there's going to be more than one episode per any particular podcast. Go ahead and use whatever story makes sense to you when it comes to your data needs. Now that we have a handle to our collections, now we can start creating our data. Let's go ahead and start by creating a podcast in this podcast collection. What we're going to say is we're going to say podcast result error equals podcast collection dot insert one. We're going to provide it a context and we're going to provide it BSON document. For now, we're going to be using BSON document, BSON array, BSON map, things like that. But in a future lesson, we're going to be exploring actual native Go data structure mapping for MongoDB BSON documents. So when it comes to our BSON document, we have the ability to add pretty much any field we want to this particular insert. Let's go ahead and add the following. Let's go ahead and say key. Let's go ahead and say title. And let's go ahead and say the value is going to be maybe the polyglot developer podcast. Let's go ahead and add another field. This time we're going to say key. This is going to be author. And we're going to have a value, and this value is going to be Nick Raboy. 
So for now, because so that way we can prevent errors here, let's go ahead and comment, comment out episodes collection. We're going to explore it in a minute. But we want to be able to catch the error if one should happen and also print out the result of the insert if it was successful. So first of all, let's say if error not equal to nil, we're going to say log fatal error. So if for some reason there was an error, we're going to print it out and exit out of our application. Now, if it was successful, let's go ahead and print out the result. So we're going to say fmt.println, and we're going to say podcast result.insertedID. So if it was successful, we're going to print out the actual document ID of the document that was inserted. Let's go ahead and give it a try. We're going to say go run main.go. And as you can see, it did print out our object ID. So it didn't print out an error, it printed out an object ID. So if we go back into MongoDB Atlas and we refresh, we now have a quick start database and we have a podcast collection. And inside of that podcast collection, we have one document where the ID matches what was printed out, as well as the two fields that we added for our particular document. Now we can make some modifications. We can make our lives a little easier. For example, if we go back into Visual Studio Code, we don't necessarily need to identify key and value. It just makes that assumption for us. So we can actually remove them if we want to shorthand it. So as you can see now, we have just a comma separated list here. So the first item being the key, the second item being the value. So you have the option to use either key and value or remove them entirely. Now, you're not going to be restricted to just BSON documents because what we saw was, was rather flat. If we look at it here, we have just properties or fields one after another. If we wanted to, we can add some complexity to this. For example, if we wanted to, we could add an array. So let's say, for example, we wanted something called tags. We could add an array of tags. Maybe we want development. Maybe we want programming. Maybe we want something else. Let's go ahead and see how to do that inside of our Go application. So going back into our Go application, let's go ahead and add another line to our BSON here. Let's go ahead and say we want tags. And tags is going to be a BSON array instead of a string. So we're going to say development programming, maybe coding, and I'm going to save it. Let's go ahead and clear our terminal and run our application again. So we forgot a comma at the end of the line. So let's go ahead and save it and run it again. So you can see we got a an ID to our document, so we received no error. And if we go into our Atlas cluster and we refresh, You can see that now we have a document that has an array where it has each of our array values. So we have the option to add complexity to any one of our documents that we create. And if we wanted to, it doesn't have to be an array. It could be a map. It could be another document. We have that full flexibility. Now let's take a look at another example. Now we want to insert many documents. So insert more than one in a single operation. We can use the insert many function that the MongoDB Go driver offers. So let's go ahead and give it a try. We're going to say episode result error equals, and let me uncomment this out so that way we have code completion on line 28. We're going to say episodes collection dot insert many. We're going to provide it a context, but this time around we're going to provide it a slice of interface. So we're going to be providing more than one BSON document, so hence the slice. So we're going to start with this. We're going to say BSON D, and we're going to provide podcast. This is going to represent a, the parent podcast, so the podcast that we had just inserted, because these particular documents or these particular episodes are going to be at part of that particular podcast show. So we're going to say podcast result dot inserted ID. Now, let's go ahead and add another field. 
This time around, maybe we add a title. So this title, let's go ahead and say, keep it simple and say title number one, or let's go ahead and say episode number one. For description, let's go ahead and say that this is the first episode. And then finally, let's give it a duration. Let's say that our duration is going to be maybe 25 minutes. So instead of a string, we're just going to have a numeric value. We're going to add a comment here so that way we don't get an error. And we're going to clone this and do the same thing one more time so that way we can insert multiple documents in the same operation. So this time around, it's going to be episode number two. And we're going to say this is the second episode. And maybe this one's going to be 32 minutes. And I'm going to save it. It's erroring because we're not handling the error or the episode result. So let's go ahead and handle that. So if there's an error, we're going to say log.fatal. Otherwise, let's go ahead and print out the results. So we're going to say fmt.println, and we're going to say episode result dot inserted IDs. So this is going to be more than one ID that comes back. Let's go ahead and save it. Let's go ahead and clear our terminal and run our application. You can see that the first time it printed was the actual podcast from our insert one. And then the second time it printed, it printed out a slice. So it printed out our two object IDs, one for each podcast episode. Let's go ahead and look at it in our MongoDB Atlas dashboard. Let's go ahead and refresh. And let's go ahead and click on this new episodes podcast or episodes collection. You can see that we have two documents now that were added in that single insert operation. And they reference the previously inserted document for podcast. So if we revisit our Visual Studio Code and, and talk about what we just did. So for example, we established a handle to our database, which didn't actually exist at the time that we created it. We also established a handle to each one of our collections for that database, which also didn't exist. As soon as we inserted one document, they started to exist. We inserted a document. We saw how to use BSON D. We saw how to use key and value uh, as well as without. We also saw how to use BSON A, which represents array. When it comes to insert many, we took the previously inserted ID and we used it to create multiple BSON documents in one go. And then finally, we printed out all of the IDs. So this was the next step when it comes to getting started with the Go driver for MongoDB. In the future, we're going to be seeing how to do other CRUD operations as well as work with complex aggregation queries, uh, also binding to native Go data structures to make our lives potentially easier given different scenarios.